We're back at Harbor Yards today with uh, my friend Louis Lopez, who plays for the for the Bridgeport Bluefish. I've been coming to the games up here at Harbor Yards for a long, long time. I've actually done some work with them. I've helped them out with their evaluations on their pro tryouts. And as you guys know, Alberto Martinez, a very close friend of mine, he's partners with me with some of the things we do. And due to that, I've gotten more intimately involved with a lot of the players. Louis is uh, a really, really interesting personality in this game for a, a variety of reasons. Now, I'm going to direct this a little bit, and then I want you to tell us uh, about, you, about yourself. But I will tell you that uh, he has been in the game as a professional for, for 20 years, played the big leagues with Toronto and Montreal, and uh, is, is still playing. Uh, to this day, and I've been coming here a long time, and been this. For those of you who don't know, this is incredibly high level. This is what we consider 4A. This is not Triple A. This is 4A. Most of the players that are playing in, in these some of these independent leagues have have major league experience. And uh, if if you're not, if you don't see the difference, if you go watch a college game, even high level college, and you don't see the the difference, you're you're not paying attention. So Louis has played at. At, at this level, not just professional, but at this level for a long, long time. Now, what I, I uh, want to talk to you, ask you about, is if I was to say one word, it's passion. Okay, you're still doing this. You got a wife and how many kids? I have a wife and four kids. Four kids. Okay. Now I know that you do other things. You're you teach, and you're up for some coaching jobs, and and all this kind of thing, and. And like it or not, you know, you're you're probably close to the end. We're talking about, you know, squeezing another year or two out of this. But one of the most interesting things I find about you and your career is you're doing this because of baseball, because this is just here. And and I'm a few years older than you and I know I I feel the same way. And this is something I try to translate to the kids. That are in all these college programs and everything, you go look. Everybody can dangle. You're gonna play pro ball. You're gonna play college. Ball. And and yes, there are quantifiable levels of performance. That's why I wanted to talk about how 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 high this level is. But the other thing is, you you just can't produce that unless you have this. Or unless you have the passion for it and I uh, I want you to uh, to talk about that can you tell us some of your your background growing up and and all this kind of thing and when you know what what was it about baseball if you can say if you can quantify it or qualify it and, and what keeps you going here yeah, sure um, I mean it started way back you know my dad uh, put a bat in my hands when probably at the age of two and I grew up in New York City really uh, where is he in, in the city? Brooklyn. Really? Right in Brooklyn. I went to high school in Brooklyn. I uh, pretty much still hold every offensive record in the high school. Uh, it was all city. I was runner-up to player of the year to Manny Ramirez. I was going to so ask you. that Because I, I played where he went. Is that where you went to high school? No, I went to Canossi High School. I, 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 played, it. I played it. Yeah, yeah. I played, yeah. I played there. Well, we did play together in summer ball. Really? Okay, myself, him, Frankie Rodriguez, Julio Lugo, I mean, the list goes on and on with the awesome players that came out of the youth service. Team. And, uh, you know, I I tell everybody, you know, uh, with all that, I still didn't get drafted out of high school. I ended up going to college. I signed my uh, letter of intent very late. Very out for summer ball. I went to Coastal Carolina University. Sure. They saw me in a tournament in North Carolina in July. I had graduated in June. And I still didn't know where I was going to college. So we, it's funny you talk about scholarships. A lot of the times, the inner city kids, we uh, have a stereotype that we really uh, don't have good grades, uh, where we like to hang out. And that's not the case. There's a lot of kids out there that have good grades, that uh, come up from a good household and stuff like that. You know, and that they, and they're concentrating on their schooling as well as their baseball. And. Uh, I ended up going to college there. I got a full scholarship there. Uh, I broke every record in college as well. I'm in the Hall of Fame in my college. I'm in the Hall of Fame of uh, the, the conference. And I uh, mean, to do all that stuff and still not get drafted, it's pretty. No. I, I still, it still throws up a white flag to me. I still wonder why. You know. And like I tell all the kids when I teach them, 
throughout the winter and talk with them. I tell them, wow. pro ball, you cannot control pro ball. It's if somebody likes you to give you a chance. You have control of working out with baseball, if you're serious about it, you have to be dedicated. And you have control of your grades. You can do good in school, you can study. When I do, uh, uh, when I do stuff with college players, I, they know I've never seen anybody get it right. I say to them, what do you think the most important thing is? And they go, my speed, my arm strength, my, you know, whatever. And I go, no, it's your grades. Yeah. It's your grades. And it's interesting, it, it is not, there are quantifiable things. When uh, Berto and I did a tryout in Torrington, we talk about you got to run a seven flat. Right. If you're seven five, they're not even going to let you hit. Right. And, but, but the other thing is, even despite all that, you've got to find somebody that sees you and likes you. Exactly. And it is a little bit political. It's amazing in a sport that they count numbers mm -hmm. in so much details. It still is. You got to find somebody that'll that'll go in there and 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 root for you and, and, and put exactly. you up. Yep. And that's why I tell everybody, you know, I thank God for independent ball because that's where I started after college. I started independent ball. I started with the St. Paul Saints out in uh, Minnesota. I know who they are. I was there for about a month. Uh, they sent me out on loan to the Ogden Raptors. Now, mind you, this is where I knew it was my opportunity. Uh, my team was an independent team, but we were playing in an affiliated league, the Pioneer League. Sure, sure. I'm so with it. when I'm on the plane, I'm flying over there, and I'm saying to myself, man, if I put up numbers in this league, I can hit good against their draft picks. Somebody got to give me a chance. Right. So I went to that league, and I ended up hitting 360 that year. And still didn't win a batting title. <laughs> Mind you. <laughs> that goes to show. You know, there were three other guys that were hitting too. And uh, that's when Toronto came and, and asked me, they invited me to uh, go and work out with them in the extended spring training the following summer. And I said, let's take a chance. I had a job offer on the table. I already had my degree. So I had nothing to lose. I said, uh, well, let me, get, let me take this chance. And because uh, when I was 30 years old, I didn't want to think back and say, what if? Absolutely. So that's why I went out there on the limb and went out there and uh, worked out with the team on my own expense. I was down in wow. Dunedin. Wow. I'm staying with family about an hour away. I drive in every morning very early, be there one of the first ones in the clubhouse, and probably one of the last ones to leave. Can I ask you something? I know how that important that is to uh, that's what makes you succeed. But but what I try to get across to the kids is, the, what I ask is, people notice that. Right. They notice that. One of, one of the things I tell kids when they're going to tryouts is, even if you can't play, be first in line when they run. Do something to make them notice you. It doesn't, cost, doesn't take any talent or cost anything for you to hustle. Hustle. Be all. the first one in, be the last one out, somebody's going to notice that. That's the way I always brought up. I mean, for 20 years, you come out to see me play, and I don't do nothing spectacular. I'm the first one to tell you. Maybe that was the reason why I didn't get drafted or whatever, because a lot of times they go under 5 tool projection. But I always say it's not 5 tools, it's 6 tools. And a lot of times you don't measure that. And maybe that might be the big one. That's what we talk about, that passion, having that heart. Yeah, it's very interesting what I, uh, I've got a kid right now who has, is one of my students and he's division three. I want to, I, I guess you could loosely say he's all American and he, and he led the nation two years in a row with stolen bases. But, and, and there are adjustments he's got to make for the next, uh, the next level of ball, but he doesn't have, he's 5'9". He's Okay, so it's what I tell them is it's very easy to say no. A lot of these guys, even scouts, yeah, it, it's it's easy for them to just show up at the ballpark, eat their lunch, get the clipboard, have the gun out, have the right, and 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 when they call in, they go, nope, I didn't see anybody. Yep. Do you know Kevin Morton by any chance? No, I Kevin's don't. A, uh, Kevin's a friend of mine. He was a number one pick of the of the Red Sox one one year, and he told me. How even scouting is ba a lot of times based on negativity. Yeah. He said that he says I could be working out and uh, there could be five scouts, 
and one guy says, oh, I really like Martin. And, and one, of, one, just one other guy can say, I don't like him. And then he's afraid to put in that positive, uh, that positive re report. A lot which of is times, so easy to say no. A lot of the times, you know, you hear a lot of negative stuff. This game is based on failure. Right. So most of the time they're going to criticize you. And I've heard it all. I've heard it all. I'm too slow. I have no power. I have no position. I don't... And all in all, I still knew I had it in my heart. I had that chip on my shoulder that I was going to make it. As long as I put in my work, I knew I was going to get there. Because I wanted to prove a lot of people wrong. Maybe that's why I'm still that playing. Be, that could be a great uh, Maybe that's why I'm still Absolutely. playing. Absolutely. You know? But for a lot of the times, I heard that all the time. And, I, you know, I thank God I was able to make it to the big leagues with all that negativity. Well, what, what I tell the kids is, I mean, you can imagine. And boy, at the levels below college and pro, there's some, you know, I'm not saying everybody that coaches in, in college or pro ball is a, is a wise guy either, you know, knows what they're doing either. There's a lot of idiots at, even at those levels. But, but boy, you know, below that, uh, high school, I mean, holy mackerel, there's so many unqualified uh, guys that call themselves professionals. And what I say, and you're the poster child for this, it's not what somebody says about you or thinks about you is what you know about yourself. Exactly. And that's what makes you succeed in, in this game. It's what you know about yourself. It's not a price tag that they put on you. This guy says, you know, sign a million, two million dollars, whatever. You know what my bonus was? Two gloves and a pair of spikes. <laughs> that was my bonus. First base glove, third base glove, and spikes. And I took the pen, and in the back of my mind, I said, okay, that's fine. I'm gonna make my money in the big leagues. I'm not worried about this, because I have my degree already. I what have is your degree? Come on, what's your degree in? Uh, business management. Okay, now let me. Now let me. So you were in the big leagues, and that's that's a while ago. Now this is the thing that I you're, for lack of a, you're Crash Davis. I am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> you're Crash Davis. I am. A lot of people call me you know, and tell me I'm the real Crash Davis. Right. And uh, you know I take it. I, I don't mind that. I think it's at great. All. I you think know, it's because, great because uh, I just think that. They portray Crash Davis as having that heart, that will to continue to play and to teach younger players, and that's what I'm here for. All right, uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap on that and come back in just a second.